Hi. Is this Ergon Alley? Miami. What? Yes, this is Ergon Alley, Miami. Oh, oh, yes, of course, of course. How can I help you? I was told that there isn't a single video out there of these and that you may be the first one to make one. Video of what? 50 caliber pellets. What? For the HDR50, how cool is that? What? Are you sure they're gonna work? Absolutely not. Please find out for the whole internet. Good day folks, welcome back to my channel and as always, thank you so much for watching. Today is going to be all about you guys and how this video was made possible only thanks to two of my viewers, Mr. Head and Sir Limpolot. I want to thank you both. Mr. Head recently commented on one of my videos that he had tried these Air Venturi 50 cal 185 grain hollow point pellets in his HDR50 and he was happy with them. Why didn't I think about it? Anyway, you can find these on Amazon. The links are below. Uh, this box of 50 pieces costs just about $25. And let's load them up. Oh, shit. They don't fit. Of course they don't. Mr. Head had told me that. Unfortunately, the pellets are a bit too wide for the HDR50 cylinder. And they either need to be trimmed down one by one, or you can just widen the magazine holes with a half inch drill bit. Now when you drill, make sure you leave a few millimeters at the bottom on the back side of the cylinder in order to hold the pellets in place. Uh, this one was my first attempt and I drilled right through each, each hole, uh, in and out. And as you see, the pellets fall right through. So this cylinder is no good. I drilled a second cylinder where I got four holes uh, well and two holes unfortunately were too wide I went all the way through so let's see that's one of the good ones okay so these four holes as you can see hold very well again because I left I didn't drill all the way down I left a little bitty uh, space or, or here of extra plastic to hold in the uh, the pellets in place. These two holes unfortunately came out a bit too wide. As you'll see they'll probably, oh this one holds but with a little pressure it'll fall through so it kind of holds, kind of not. All right so we have our cylinder. They fit perfectly. Uh, four of them are pretty airtight while two of them not so much. Let's try loading them up in our HDR50. Sorry. It's kind of hard to do this all backwards. There we go. And they are loaded. And now that we solved the size issue, let's check out their weight because 185 grain is pretty heavy for the HDR50. Wow, 12 and a half grams. Woof! These are heavy, guys. Very, very heavy. 12 grams. Well, here's something interesting. With the cylinder that I had uh, scraped leaving leaving you know a bit of space in the bottom for for it to be able to hold the uh, pellets 
Um, I took the two out that were falling off. I just kept the four that are well held in there. Now, if we put it into our gun, I have not armed it yet with CO2. Um, the, it's very hard for the drum here to rotate. It just won't. Thus, the trigger won't pull. So, on the other hand, on the other hand, well, this is a bit hard, complicated. If I use this drum, where as you see, can barely all the barely holds the the pellets, they all fall right through. Okay, so we have this drum, which is super annoying because it's very hard to keep the pellets in place. They keep falling out. However, if we're able to keep the pellets in place, load the gun, Still have a bit of issues but before i was able to there it shoots almost with no problem a couple jams here and there but compared to the other drum or cylinder it would not shoot so i will take back what i said earlier about not drilling all the way through the holes and instead i do recommend to drill all the way through. I'm assuming that these pellets will not destroy the barrel given that they're so wide, I hope. Uh, but here at Airgun Alley, we are not afraid to stress test our gear. That's what we're here for. Actually, there's a way to find out if they are too big or not. Maybe, oh, yep. They fall straight through the barrel, well, that one did. All right. Well, I don't know if you saw that, but one fell straight through, which tells me they're not too big. All right, time for our chrono test. Uh, as you saw, these pellets are quite heavy. They, they weigh uh, at least 12 grams. So I suspect that uh, the feet per second speed will not be too elevated. Also, for those of you who saw my video last time, I shot this chronograph with one or two uh, steel balls. I pretty much destroyed it, but nothing that a little magic cannot fix. Abracadabra. And voila, we have a new chronograph. All right, well, I was figured they flew pretty slow at about 130, 150 feet per second. Let's check out the damage. Oh, I suspected they were gonna go through. Now, I don't know if there was water up here. We'll have to check the slow-mo again. Um, if there was water up here, if they just went through empty air, but I'm definite there was water here and quite some denting, all right. Nice and powerful. All right, guys, let's see these perform on our usual coconut hard surface test. Um, I won't be shooting from very far given their weight, so it'll be about 10, 12 feet away. Well guys, as you would expect, there is some damage indeed. The coconut was quite clean, open. Again, the distance wasn't exaggerated, about 12 feet away. Um, but there is a problem, my friends. And that is that the last shot the pellet got jammed in there. 
I tried to pull it out with this rod, metal rod, it won't come out. It's just stuck in there. The cylinder won't turn. So I'm gonna have to open up this gun. Okay, so before switching to the second part of the video, let's give a final conclusion uh, to these. Um, I know there's a lot of DIY guys out there uh, that like to do their own modifications, their own tweaks and all that. So if you are able to drill the drum, uh, the cylinder of the HDR50 in a way that these pellets fit perfectly um, and also you have a high powered HDR50. This is uh, this was uh, had the restrictor removed, had, has a shorter pin, so indeed it was brought up in power. There's, uh, there's also more things that you can do which I do recommend. So the highest the power obviously the better. So again if you're able to uh, modify the cylinder and you have a strong strong gun then I think that these are very, very uh, bad boys. I mean, they, w what is there not to like? Uh, hollow point, heavy metal, uh, steel projectiles. Um, however, if you are not a DIY or DIY kind of person and you do not have an ultra powerful HDR50, unfortunately, and I do not recommend these at all. And now to the second part of our video. Sir Limpalot, a gentle gentleman from the UK who sent me this cute little box containing two cute little jars with each of them containing 68 caliber homemade, really well made by Sir Limpalot himself, 68 caliber slugs. Now he made two different versions a lightweight version and a heavyweight version as you can see um, again they're they feel really really solid really really well made uh, they are made with polymer casting resin uh, with metal power powder excuse me uh, the heavyweight slug has a nine and a half millimeter bb uh, while the lightweight has an eight millimeter bb in them uh, very very well made very solid feeling um, he also named them he named them bad ass slugs but he also asked me to shoot them first before confirming this name so let's see indeed if these are badass slugs or not <laughs> And today we're going to test Sir Limpalot's slugs with our HDR 68. This one was modified to 30 joules by Troy from Troy's Toys down in Hawaii. Uh, this thing is an absolute cannon, but you're going to see that very shortly. Um, I did reweigh the slugs. They are indeed the weight uh, that he indicated. The heavier weight are uh, around 7 grams, while the lighter weight slugs are a little over 4.5 grams. Let's load everything up. I wanted to share this cool video with you that I filmed this morning uh, while I took my dog to the beach. Um, we spotted the stingray that was just munching mollusks uh, right off the shore. Uh, he didn't see me or notice me at first, uh, but then he just kind of turned around and left when he did. All right, so today's targets for the 68 caliber badasses by Sir Limpalot will be a five pound all purpose flower bag that we will use to catch the bullets during the chrono test. The usual coconut, of course, a three pound can of baked beans, and of course, a giant watermelon.
All right, so we just shot the heavyweights. Uh, again, they're about seven grams. Uh, they flew at around 290 all the way down to 260 feet per second. And let's see what kind of damage they, oh, they did to the flower bag. Guys, this is really one of the rare times where projectile does this, just uh, penetrates the bag completely. This is amazing. Five pounds of flour, compact, just went through like butter. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Let's try the lightweight now. All right, well, definitely a higher speed for these lightweights. We were well into the 300 feet per second. Did we get any full penetration of the water jug? Oh, no, we did not. That's strange. Really hard to predict sometimes these things, aren't they? There are some bumps indeed, but no complete penetration. Okay, so I just pulled them out of the water jug and they are all intact, untouched and ready to be reused. Next up, this can of baked beans. And for these, we're gonna use these badass slugs, the heavyweight version. That smells like it does at the ranch at lunchtime every single day. Wow. We have indeed entered this bean can very well, but we have not exited. There is no complete penetration. The only thing that, com that penetrated completely one of these was a Devastator 68 caliber just recently in one of those videos. However, the entry damage is indeed quite significant, given that this was a full metal can. All right, final target, guys. Watermelon, we'll be shooting both rounds with this, the lightweight and the heavyweight badass slugs. Okay, well, no explosion, no scalping, but definitely some good cracking. They all, all the projectiles, all 10 of them seem to be still in here. Well, my friends, Sir Limpolot, Mr. Head, we have reached the end of the video. Um, okay, so on the Senecas, again, uh, thank you so much, Mr. Head, for suggesting them. I'm really glad they work for you. Uh, they are awesome. I mean, if, if you get them to work, if you do all the things that need to be done for them to work proper, properly, properly, I think probably nothing would beat uh, a projectile like this. As for the 68 caliber kick-ass slugs, well, those are just perfect. They just go into the magazine and they're ready to shoot. Uh, really real made. Unfortunately for the public, they are not yet for sale. Sir Limpolot is not making them for the market at the moment, uh, but in case he will, I will definitely keep you posted on that. Um, as you saw, my HDR50 is now jammed. I'm gonna try and uh, fix it myself, should I not be able, which is a very high probability. Um, I'm probably gonna have to send it somewhere. And I'm so glad that I ordered this in the meantime because I always felt like I needed a backup for the HDR50. So this just came in this morning. I haven't opened it yet, so bear with me one second. I just want to open it with you to show you what is going to be next on our videos. And I really want to know what you think because I'm not entirely convinced I made a good purchase. 
I really hope so. So what do we have here, guys? Other than a lot of packaging. ta -da! First Strike Roscoe 50 caliber revolver. Um, I, they, come, uh, they come with a kind of like a low impact valve. Uh, I called up the store before they shipped it and asked them to directly insert the high power valve for me so that I don't have to do it. Wow, this thing is heavy. Dual action. 50 caliber revolver. We're gonna see this next time. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks so much for clicking that like button if you did indeed like the video. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Here come some bloopers and I'll see you next week. Yeah. <laughs>